Yoga is the shattering of illusions, delusions, and superstitions. That is a quote by Yogi Hari. Satnam, Om Shanti. Welcome to Can I Get a Satnam? I'm your host, Sasha. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. This is the first episode of season three on the podcast and my first time ever taking a video at the same time because I'm starting a YouTube channel. So there will be video talks to go along with the podcast. Anyway, it's all going to come together in 2020. It's going to be lots of fun. Um, So speaking of illusions, delusions, and superstitions, I'm going to start every episode of this season with a quote by Yogi Hari, my guru, and that is one to honor him and his teachings and two to just help orient the conversation a little. So speaking of illusions, delusions, and superstitions, I totally had in mind uh, that I was going to record all episodes of season three while on the ashram. I just got back from a 300 hour teacher training course, an advanced course, and the schedule was so intense. We had two Saturdays off um, as far as the afternoon, so it's a couple hours off, maybe 10 hours total off from the whole three weeks. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna record my podcast so that it can be live from the ashram. It's gonna be so awesome. I had this whole illusion and vision of how I thought it was gonna go. And I did try and record a bit, but you know, part of ashram life and being in a training is that you're with a big group of people. So there were almost 20 of us going through this training together. And that means you're pretty much living in bunk beds with a roommate, doing communal meals and activities. And so personal quiet time is really hard to come by. And then even when it is quiet, I didn't want to talk and record a podcast and be disturbing everybody else. So I had to let that one go. I did have a chance to speak with Yogi Hari about my project and told him all about this Satnam podcast and its short talks on yoga philosophy. And he he seemed to like it, which I was really excited about. And he said that one of the things I should talk about first, which is why we're here today, is about happiness, real happiness. Everybody wants happiness. And when we first start realizing what we want, sometimes happiness seems like it's wealth or power, right? These things that we can gain through our work and our efforts. And we don't realize that in trying to gain wealth and power, and please our own senses, that we're actually trading our health for wealth and success. And that creates stress, and that's the opposite of happiness. So Yogi Hari says, happiness comes from peace, and peace comes from peace of mind. Peace of mind is something that we can cultivate in ourselves by practicing yoga, by practicing meditation, by being around people who support our growth. That's what right association means. Um, By practicing right discrimination, right? Not just believing absolutely everything that's told to us or recommended to us, but actually using our discrimination and discernment, that helps to cultivate peace of mind. In fact, he said to talk about how all five aspects of Hatha yoga, which is the physical practice of yoga, that's what a lot of people think of when they say, "I, I do yoga, they're kind of saying I do hatha yoga if they're going to classes and stretching and exercising. If you listen to my episode on what kind of yoga do you practice, you can learn more about those different systems. But the five aspects of hatha yoga are right exercise. So that's taking care of the physical body that you're born into. Do what you can. Right breathing is really as important as the exercise and the movement is how we're channeling our energy and life source. Right diet and this is a topic that i'll talk on a little more in this season as far as the ashram diet and some of that so we've got right exercise right breathing right diet right relaxation so it's not just about go 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 achieve and accomplish but also knowing when to relax and rejuvenate and heal ourselves and then finally a positive mental attitude so those are the five aspects of hatha yoga And every aspect of yoga, hatha or otherwise, is made to help us refine and to purify. So in our pursuit of happiness, there's a really big importance in being positive. We can heal ourselves through having a more positive outlook. 
when we're always complaining and negative, it does perpetuate itself. It brings in more negativity and things to complain about. And when we take a minute to observe ourselves, if we realize, oh, I've been mostly complaining and things continue to go wrong versus I've been really trying to focus on what's working and being in good association, again, around people who support what's working and help push us forward, we can prioritize what to do with ourselves with this right association and right discrimination. I've talked about this a bit, but I'll say it one more time. The idea of positive mental attitude is not to be fake or forced. It's not this sort of popular pop culture, oh, everything's okay, just only focus on the good. No, you have to have discernment. You have to know when something's not working. So it's not just that you immediately go to like only good and positive. There has to be an understanding of the whole spectrum and then you make a choice to have a positive mental attitude and that's gonna help along with the quest for happiness. So there we are. <laughs> um, I think that when we first arrived at the ashram, one thing that really stood out to me was Yogi Hari saying, there's no limit to refinement and purification in anything. There's no limit, we are limitless. We know that if we have a vision and we have a goal, we can reach it through enthusiasm, persistence, unshakable faith, all of these things that lead to success in yoga also translate to success in everyday life. Yogi Hari talked a lot about um, when we wanna do something, when we want to achieve something, we have to find a teacher, right? We have to find a teacher and then we have to have faith that that teacher can help us to get there. And it's not just about self-study and practice and learning on our own. There really does need to be that outside force, ideally a guru if we're talking about spiritual growth, but you know, whatever. Um, but that it, there is a teacher that's giving guidance, that's giving a impartial look at what you're up to and maybe helping you to point out some things that aren't working so well. If we wanna know our true desires and we really wanna focus our efforts, we have to look at our thoughts. What are we thinking about the most often? But if you're not sure about your thoughts, if your thoughts just feel really scattered and all over the place, then the next thing to look at is our habits and actions. What are we doing? How are we actually spending our time? Are we waking up and immediately jumping on the cell phone and social media or are we immediately jumping on the yoga mat to meditate? I go between the two some days and I am aware of that. So I'm using my tools of yoga and my training to look at my own habits and actions look at my own thoughts, and then look at my desires and see that my desires are pushing me closer to a realization of my true nature, the God within me, the shattering of illusions, delusions, and superstitions in favor of peace of mind and true happiness. So those are some quick teachings from Yogi Hari. His ashram does trainings all year round. I have shared the link below to go check it out if you're interested. I highly recommend it. Again, going through the next nine episodes, I'll be touching on different aspects of ashram life. If you have any questions, please let me know. I can always be reached at sashaislive at gmail.com. And I really look forward to going deeper into some of these yoga concepts, wishing you lots of happiness, lots of peace and peace of mind. Satnam, Om Shanti. Bye.